Welcome to Creator Logs, where I build worlds and show you how. Cellar Path is a solo extreme demon that I've been working on for some months. Last episode, I showed you how I created an immersive cellar environment and the path that connects to it. We created a sense of danger and intensity as the player leaves the cellar on this treacherous journey. I talked about how things on this path get more magical and mysterious as the player progresses. I started to show that by having an underground wind begin to pick up as the player enters these buried arches. That'll be the topic of this video, creating magic. As the cellar path progresses, we begin to enter some runes. This part in particular is going to serve as a transition between the cellar itself and the ancient runes that the player will go to. For this part, I wanted to take a lot of inspiration from this one part in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. It's a game I've always really liked ever since I first played it. I love the environments and the music and the atmosphere in this game, and so I wanted to take some inspiration from this part in particular. To start off with the background, I made some doorways and some torches. That's not a lot, but the block design is going to be the main focus of this part, and those two details I think are enough to sell the environment. Moving objects tend to lag more than ones that aren't moving, so having more of the detail in the foreground actually helps a lot with performance. These torches are pretty cool, so I took this one animated fire object, it's normally pretty cartoony, but I put it on low opacity blending, and layered a bunch of them, kind of going in a gradient from white to a darker reddish orange on the edges, and it looks a lot more like realistic fire. There is one more detail in this background, and that's that I want to start introducing these inscriptions. They kind of hold these magical properties to them. I wanted the ones in the background to feel looming and mysterious. So now that the rune theme is established, I wanted to tie this part a little bit more into the cellar theme with the block design. I meant for this to feel kind of like some sort of secret workshop, one long ago abandoned. The bottom structures are embedded in the ground, but the top ones are being held up by chains, adding some realism. Making some of them bounce down makes it feel like this place is falling apart. The skulls fill this place with a dark mystery. Clearly dark secrets are to be uncovered. And they're also a reference to the awesome creator Yorid, who is awesome and cool. Anyway, to add some variation, I changed the structuring up a bit in the second part. Introducing these grandfather clocks and tikis helps keep things fresh while still keeping the theme of the part. The structure at the very beginning is a mixture of this part and the last part that I showed in the last episode. Last episode I mentioned I want a continuous feel in this level, so blending the block designs into each other is a good way of doing this. For detailing these structures, there's really not a lot to say. Using this tile set, I was able to create some interesting texture. I tried to have a few different shapes on each structure for some variation. Adding to the inscriptions from earlier, I put some on these stone tablets to help further the much more ancient rune theme in this part. For the second part, I changed up some of the designs a little bit. Since the top grandfather clocks weren't being held up by chains, I added some support beams behind them to make things make more sense. They also helped change up the structuring even more. I added the cobwebs from earlier to make this place feel more abandoned, although they won't be in the level much longer. Some roots on the ceiling remind you that this is all deep underground and help fill up some empty space as a bonus. Also there's still mushrooms. It's totem time! I had this really cool idea for a spinning totem pool and I'm really proud of how it turned out. Most of these frames are just 10 or 11 objects. I use different versions of this tile set right here for different widths on the wings, and the animation looks way smoother than it should. I made a tower of totems and made each one going down rotated 45 degrees, and then just moved the whole pool down instantly for each new frame. In total, every frame together only uses 182 objects. So then I just looped the same totem pool over and over with some move triggers. Overall, the whole thing barely adds anything to the level's object count. Finally, it's time for that sweet RTX on. Adding some glow to the blocks made them feel shiny and golden, which fits the sparkly sound of this part of the song. And I added some varied pulsing glow over everything to make it feel even sparklier, if that's a word. <laughs> I 
I added a blending overlay over everything that fades in as you approach this part. I did this by decreasing the brightness of each layer by 0.1. Lastly, I added some pulses over everything, being sure to vary them in the second part, and that was it for this part. That's when we hit the first hard transition in this level. There's a strong shift in the song, and I wanted to reflect that in the level. Everything turns to blue with an intense flash, and a spear shoots up from behind you, telling you that you can no longer turn back. The runes come to life with magic, and you're ready to enter the real cellar path. Transitioning out of the last part, I have it look like there's a cave entrance on the left, with some vines that you just came through. I have this on both sides to create a sense of cohesion. This part is entirely a blue color continuing that shift in color and tone. It has very closed-in gameplay to create a sense of danger, and you can already see that there will be some strong flickering in this part from the glow around the structures. Also, I forgot to get rid of the pulses on the spikes, but this is actually a great time to explain that the reason I added those was to make the gameplay even easier to see. In the background, I have some default brick objects layered with these cracked ones. Since the background fills up so little of the screen, it really won't have that many details. Some wood beams help the orbs and portals to look embedded in the level for some more cohesion. And lastly, the spikes and saws use a cool layering effect that I saw from Grapheme by Optical. He has a tutorial on the effect where he explains it pretty well, it's pretty cool. And so then I started to add details to the structures. To texture the main structures, I used a hexagon pattern that changes size really fast to add energy. I added some little pebbles to the structures as well. I used similar blocks to what I used for the background, overlaying the lighter structures with glow blending them in. Next, I added vines and rocks to the edges of the ground. I added a similar effect to the crawl space part from earlier, but this time on light blending so that the gameplay would be easier to see. To add some more depth, I put these pillars in the background. I'm not sure what they're supposed to look like, but they look cool. I say it's time to bring the magic to life. By using a really scuffed setup that I won't bother to explain, I made these inscriptions jitter around and flicker blue. This was actually kind of inspired by the Minecraft enchantment table symbols that kind of float around the enchantment table. I added a bunch of carvings to the stone using... What object did I use? Leave your guesses in the comments below. It's these objects, of course it is. Not only do they make great wires, great vines, and great roots, you can also just draw things with them. These are actually a lot of fun to make. This part is supposed to be closed in, and I don't want to add a lot of depth, but a little bit can't hurt. By adding some different structures on the top and bottom, I create a visual gradient of shapes. Besides, just having some big stone slabs hanging from the ceiling doesn't make a lot of sense. To make everything feel more closed in, I added some rocks, grass, and vines occluding everything. I made some of the vines and grass move at different speeds than others so it feels more real and not just like some kind of paper cutout. And you know the drill. To start, I added some of these objects on blending as particles. They'll spin around on their own, so they don't even need any groups to work. Of course, I added some pulses over everything, and I added a highly scaled glow over the symbols and players, so they kind of look like light sources. Lastly, I added a few pieces of dark glow over everything, moving past at really fast speeds. These are only 24 objects, but when you move them this fast, it actually looks fine, and they add a pretty nice sense of motion. In stark contrast to the last part, I want this next part to be the most open part of the level. You'll be entering the city, as this sign suggests. Anyway, this will be a vast and looming underground city, abandoned long ago. Kind of inspired by New Home in Undertale, but we'll ignore that. Having this last part be so closed in creates a sense of scale that will make this city feel a lot bigger. To make these buildings feel as looming as possible, I used a constant two-point perspective with all three layers. I also made all of the buildings move very slow, but each layer still has a big difference. The closest layer moves 12% of the foreground speed, and the furthest one moves 3%. Each layer gets darker as it goes back, creating more separation and more depth. You might also be wondering why everything is white on black, with no color, since that's kind of a sudden change in the visual style. Personally, this is an aesthetic that I really like, and I think it creates a strong atmosphere of mystery. For such a tonal shift in the level, it makes sense to change something like this to accentuate that. 
For the block design, I wanted some variety in the structures. I have these pillars, some signs hanging down from chains, and whatever these are. <laughs> I don't know, they look cool. The saws I used are really basic. Overall, the background uses like 1.7 thousand objects, something like that. So I wanted to be laid back on the foreground. To make things a little more dynamic, I moved some of the structures slightly faster than others and put them in front. Now, since this is another long part with a noticeable game mode change, I decided to change up the block design a lot for the second part. I made a few different structures here. These slopes just use this default slope object with a couple other details. <laughs> since this whole level is in a dual mode and these have hitboxes, they were a bit of a headache to make work, but I made them work. I made a bunch of spears for the big wave parts, and for the blocks that the player slides on, I went with this design. And then to fill up some more space, I added some broken up fence posts moving in front of the gameplay. Also, since the block design in the second part is much simpler, I compensated with movement. Don't worry, I tested the gameplay a ton to make sure it didn't completely break or get messed up by this. Now, when we put the background and foreground together, I think we get something pretty cool. If the block design seemed a little dark to you, that's because I wanted to bring more attention to the background. Don't worry, this is honestly one of the easiest parts of the level raw gameplay-wise, so the lack of visibility really isn't a huge problem. Personally, I think it adds to the energy for the player to struggle to see what's in front of them. Anyway, to add some texture, I added a couple layers of these rotating cracked tiles. I think that looks pretty cool. It adds this kind of nice, like, static effect. And now, there's just one more thing I want to add. Or, really, a few things. This part feels vast and open, but it's also the fastest part in the level so far, and I want to accentuate that better. I added some blurry black details, moving over everything really fast, and these motion lines that I made with this object. I placed more of these rotating square objects, and then I made some super scaled up ones to look like flying debris along with some other various objects moving past. Overall, having tons of stuff flying past like this really adds to the sense of speed beyond just making the level go faster. Now, for this next part, I was gonna have someone on to playtest, but the recording got really messed up, so yeah, I had to cut that part out. So the thing about this level is that the entire thing... That's okay, though. Before I showcase what I made in this video, there's just a couple more things I want to add. Or, to put it more accurately, there's a couple things you wanted me to add. The $10 Raspberry tier on my Patreon gets the cool ability to hide a secret in each one of my levels. I want to take a minute to add some of them. Alright, so I'm over here in this part of the level with the little arches. I think I'm gonna hide two different secrets in this level, and they're both probably gonna be death effects. The first one I'm doing is one suggested by Kiro, and it's this very funny image that I saw on Twitter. So right now, just getting a base for this. I think I want to put it on T2. Yeah, I just want it to be in front of the other blocks. All right, I think that's enough for the base of the sign. Maybe bring, maybe bring the saturation on this down a little bit. As you can see here, I'm using font 6. The one I need to use is font 8. So I regret my life decisions, but I just went ahead and recreated every single character that's on the sign that I'm recreating in that font with custom letters. I spent an hour making these. I'm not going to put this amount of effort into most of these secrets, so please don't expect that. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, of course, okay, I completely missed making the O. Of course I missed one of them. You know what, you know what, we're just gonna... Boom, problem solved. O is like such an integral letter. How did I forget O out of all the letters? Also completely forgot to make a comma. Screw it, that's good enough. All right, well, that was way too much effort for what it's worth. This is 1,300 objects. You know, it's funny, this could have been like six objects if I used the actual default text, but I just can't because I'm not using this font. All right, and then I'm going to overlay some textures on top of it. I think that's pretty accurate to the original. I can't type, but let's put a little name next to that and scale this way down. And then all I have left to do is add this to a group, 893. I'm running low on those two. Toggle, 893. And then down here, turn on 893 
on death, so activate group and then touch triggered. So if you go underneath this platform, you'll hit this and then if you die, then it will trigger this beautiful sign that you can't see anymore. All right, for the next secret, this is gonna be a lot easier to add than the last one. Yellow exists 11. Another one of my Patreon supporters just wanted me to write, you unlocked the secret nothing. And put a little smiley face next to it. Also, sorry if my voice is kind of scruffy. I'm recording this at 12 a.m. That's probably not the greatest idea. All right, I'll put that on T3, scale it down a bit. All right, set this to 894. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toggle off 894, and then I'm gonna place down a little toggle orb. Where was it? There it is. I'm gonna make it invisible, so you can only see it if you like notice the particles coming off of it as you go past it. Maybe, maybe I'll make it so, yeah, I could make it so if you click, this pink pad normally launches you up when you come into this part, and so what I could do is I could just make it so if you click here at the beginning instead, it just shows you that text. Yeah, that would work. 894, that's not the group. Activate group, and that should be good to go. Let me test these out real quick. So we come into this part, we just die right there, yeah, it doesn't show up. Let's see, we die right there, oh, that does show up right there, I, okay. All right, so it looks like this doesn't work as touch triggered, so instead I'll just, I guess, set it to spawn triggered. All right, hopefully that works. This game is completely bug free and all the features make perfect sense. We die there and it still shows up. What is going on? What is the big deal? All right, scratch that. I'm just gonna put a toggle trigger. What group was it again? I'm just gonna put a toggle trigger here that toggles it on. And I'm just gonna make this touch triggered and just like scale this up. This has to work. Wait a second. Okay, so wait, actually, no, this isn't gonna work. Take a look at this. This entire level is a dual game mode. So you have a player on the top here. That's why that was happening, because the player up here was triggering any touch triggered triggers. Wow, I am not very smart. All right, I'm still gonna do it this way because I'm too lazy to change it at this point. But yeah, let's just move that up a block and that should work perfectly fine. Probably scale it down. Next one shouldn't have any issue. Let's just test out really quick. Okay, we don't click there, but then if I buffer this first jump and jump instead of hitting the pad, makes the text appear. Nice little secret. And yeah, I'll be adding the rest of these off recording. Each secret has a little name next to it of the person who hid it, and I want to see if you can find them all when the level's complete. If you want to hide a secret in this level, you still have until October 29th to join and message me what you want to hide. Keep in mind, I am able to veto or modify any of your ideas, so you will be responsible to communicate with me until we agree on something to add. Even if the secret doesn't get added by the time I release this level, I'll still be sure to add the secret for every person who joins before the 29th. I mean, unless you don't give me anything to hide, seriously, you don't think this would be a problem, but somehow, and if you join after that, you'll just get to hide it in my next level instead. Also, $5 patrons get to play my levels at any time during creation, and $1 patrons get to play them two days early, along with a lot of other cool perks. You should consider joining, I mean, if you have a little bit of extra cash laying around. Alright, one more thing after promote, be patient, we're almost there. I'll be finishing up this level and verifying it on my Twitch channel. Actually, I am a lot further along building this level than what I show in these episodes, so I'm pretty much done with the level, but I will be verifying it there. If you want to be part of that, be sure to follow me over there, twitch.tv slash jamattacklive. Alright, that's enough selling out for today. It's time for the showcase.